Good afternoon and welcome to the final installment of the UP Institute of Civil Engineering webinar series. To start off, let us all welcome our Institute Director, Dr. Maria Antonia Tanchuling. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Again, thank you so much for being here in our last installment of a series of webinars. We are holding this as part of our celebration for our 110 years of BS Civil Engineering Program in UP. So this webinar series is part of a series of events that we have been organizing. Most of them are on its finishing stages, so it's getting exciting. So just to share with you, we have a photo and story contest. Please check it out. Uh, we really have very interesting stories there. And we're going to announce the winner. Uh, tapos na po ang deadline, so please enjoy na lang and like our page. Um, we are going to announce the winner during our virtual recognition rights to be held tomorrow. So we'd like to thank our sponsor for our prizes, the UP Alumni Engineers. Maraming salamat. And then our other activities, uh, we also have a poster exhibit which feature the research projects that we are doing in the Institute. So all of them are in our Facebook page. So some of these projects you can see on the screen, like we have on solid waste management. We have something for the rehabilitation of Manila Bay uh, for the arsenic removal in groundwater and uh, transportation management software and also on uh, child road safety. So these are just some of the projects that we are doing and are featured in our page. And then we also have this, this webinar series that we have uh, been holding for the past five Fridays. So this is the fifth. We started with the, the lecture of Dr. Tabios. That was also the launch of his book. I hope you also check his book out. And we also did a talk about the future of the civil engineering profession. And then we talked about construction management in the new normal. Last week, we, we tackled transportation planning. And finally, on this installment and our last, hopefully for July, <laughs> uh, I mean, it's not impossible to, to hold, but not to hold another webinar, but not too soon. Uh, for, for this afternoon, we're going to talk about the Philippine Building Act of 2020. So for this afternoon, we want to know what are the features of this building act? Are there changes in the building code that we have had no, for a long, long time? And especially that uh, during this new normal that we call the new normal, what could be these changes? So for this afternoon, we're very fortunate to have with us Dr. Benito Pacheco, who is also one of the professors of the Institute and the first director, you know, because before we used to be a department. He's going to be introduced later in more detail by our moderator. So in the meantime, I'd like to Thank you all again for being with us this afternoon. Again, our uh, gratitude to PICE for co-sponsoring to UPRDFI. Maraming salamat. So to all of you participants, have, uh, have fun and enjoy the learning process. So welcome to our event. Okay, so let's start the ball rolling. I'd like to introduce first the moderator for this afternoon. We have with us Dr. Harold Aquino. 
Harold is a newly minted doctor. He just uh, got his doctorate, his PhD in civil engineering, and he specialized on uh, disaster risk and reduction management. And he's also part of the group which uh, looked into the revisions of the building code. He's, of course, he's one of us. He's a faculty member of the Institute of Civil Engineering, the Construction Engineering and Management Group. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce Dr. Harold Aquino. Take it away, Harold. Hi, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the fifth installment of the UPICE webinar series. Let me introduce you the speaker for this afternoon. So, our webinar speaker is a professor at the University of the Philippines, Diliman, and he's also an academician member of the National Academy of Science and Technology, or NAS Philippines. He's a member of the UP Engineering Research and Development Foundation and a specialized member, fellow, and former national president of the Philippine Institute of Civil Engineers. He recently served as project leader for the composite team of the UP National Engineering Center and the UP Law Center that conducted a multi-year study and consultation on updating the 40-year-old National Building Code, which led to the proposal of a new Philippine Building Act. His field of specialization is disaster risk management. The said project involved nearly 40 researchers from various disciplines and more than 400 direct stakeholders from various sectors. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to introduce to you someone who I consider personally as a mentor um, and one who I look up to. Um, Dr. Benito M. Pacheco. Take it away, Dr. Benito. Good day, everyone. Thank you for the kind introduction. Thank you for taking an interest in this topic, an act regulating the planning, design, construction, occupancy, and maintenance of buildings. Let's start today with Isaac Newton's residential building, or house, or home. Incidentally, he also worked from home for many months in those years of an epidemic. Let's continue today with Newton's science, which is mostly what we continue to use in the engineering of buildings. So, if we all act according to laws of physics, such as F equals MA, all our buildings will be safe and resilient, right? Well, the bottom line is it's the opposite. Actually, there is much more that is left to do. And please allow me today to explain by way of the following outline. This outline. <clears throat> First, why we need the new act or law by Congress, in addition to the classical physics laws by Newton. Second, what are some of the key features of the proposed Philippine Building Act or PBA of 2020? And third, how the new PBA of 2020, once enacted, We'll need again a lot of science, technology, and innovation in its subsidiary regulations and standards in order to really work. Shelter is the shortened title of my presentation today. Shelter is possibly a solitary house like the residential building of Isaac Newton. 
Shelter is possibly a hub or node or server for communication. Indeed, shelter is in the middle of the many concerns that we're addressing these days. Some may still reconsider, is shelter infrastructure? Well, we are reminded, especially in the time of COVID-19, shelter is something that covers or affords protection. To shelter means to protect people, property, activity. Infrastructure is the resources required for an activity and there are private and public parts of infrastructure. Housing, school, hospital, waste facility, and the like are considered social infrastructure. So yes, shelter is the most basic infrastructure. How about buildings? Is every building a shelter? What will the Philippine Building Act of 2020 say? Building is any temporary or permanent structure anchored to the ground for the shelter, enclosure, or support of persons, animals, plants, produce, products, machinery, or chattels. So yes, every building is a shelter and more. Occupancies in buildings can be as varied as the following types. So people of all walks of life are concerned about buildings. People of all walks of life may have a grievance or complaint to make or a suggestion to give. about long-standing concerns over the years and decades, for example, unfair legal arrangements, ineffective administrative arrangements, outdated technological arrangements. For more than two years, the UP National Engineering Center and UP Law Center facilitated the most recent comprehensive study and review of the National Building Code of the Philippines and its implementing rules and regulations, including conflicts among other laws like the FAR Code of the Philippines or the Local Government Code, examples of legal problem, including contradictions among government offices, example of administrative problem, including hazards that are scientifically less understood and materials or methods that are technologically less familiar, examples of scientific and technological problems. More than 400 participated and contributed coming from private sectors and government agencies. Debated were literally dozens of major issues and hundreds of provisions. Among the major concerns are the following the building permit process being either too outdated or too vague and therefore too discretionary. The design of buildings being unconscious of multiple hazards. Old buildings being orphaned by the professionals after 15 years. The retrofit of old buildings being a legal, administrative, and technological dilemma. What to do about it? And uh, yes, interagency and multi-sectoral council 
to review and update every five years or sooner that's been needed since yesterday. For example of dilemma, and for about 20 years now, we have been debating publicly about the West Valley Fault that transects Metro Manila. Is it right that the thousands of houses, structures, or buildings constructed in the vicinities of such hazards that have been identified after the fact be left to chance, the chance and risk of major disaster? Well, buildings are exposed and vulnerable to earthquake and other hazards, and so are we, the occupants. Regulations and standards for buildings have been put in question nationally and locally, legally, administratively, and technologically too. For example, in this region in Mindanao, a few months ago, three significant earthquakes shook the site in a short span of two weeks. Is it right that the, buildings on the, right, the building on the right has collapsed while the building on the left is left standing? And now in the time of COVID-19, now also the time of tropical storms, floods, landslides, are we prepared for a perfect storm? Do we have to wait for this kind of perfect storm, literally, before we act? Well, actually, since shortly after the 1970s, stakeholders have been conscious of some problems and have been experimenting with solutions. Well, what is our most recent observation? We observed that the Presidential Decree of 1977 need not have enacted into law the technological solutions of that age and the administrative arrangements of that era, which became obsolete so soon, sooner than the nominal 50 years of buildings. We observed as other nations and countries have observed, that it is so much better to keep the regulatory act focused on the most fundamental, and because fundamental, then also agile, legal arrangements, such as in the Philippine Building Act of 2020. After adoption, then the Philippine Building Act will be more amenable to adapting with science and technology innovations in its subsidiary regulations and standards, more agile, adapting to any new normal. In short, in short, we still need a better shelter with or without COVID-19. Sabi natin sa Ambition 2040, komunidad na matatag, magin hawa, panatag. Sabi natin sa Philippine Building Act of 2020, gusaling matatag, magin hawa, panatag. The PDP 2017-2022 includes the mainstreaming of disaster risk management into our infrastructure. Also, NEDA, our national planning agency, agrees that it's time, even overdue, to reform the framework and be more responsive to issues and developments currently. In fact, issues and developments that are emergent and emerging.
our long-standing concerns are so pervasive that we need to reform the very framework that holds everything together or barely holds everything together. Part of the so-called problem, I think, is the multiple usage of the term code without clear hierarchy. The comprehensive reform starts with a new Philippine Building Act. The comprehensive reform certainly does not end there. It must reckon with other coexisting laws. Administrative regulations and technological standards will have to follow in a more deliberate and deliberative manner. As it happens, after more than 100 years and the world is visited upon by the current health pandemic, more than ever, the public health, public safety, or public welfare is recognized as an endeavor by all of society. It's a priority by the Congress to reform legally. It is going to be also a reform in administration. It is going to be also a reform in technology or even a technological revolution. Legislate major reforms. That is the jump start that we need. And we thank many representatives in the previous 17 Congress and in the current 18 Congress for their bills and resolutions. We thank our senators too. Convinced by previous comprehensive studies and consultations, our national lawmakers are enacting major legal reforms as we speak. First among those is to streamline the building permit process. Then to design buildings to be more resilient against multiple hazards. Then to assess old buildings. To incentivize retrofit of old buildings. To create interagency and multi-sectoral building regulations and standards council to review and update every five years or sooner. We need to make it simpler for simple buildings, include those in the regulation do not exempt nor take those for granted. We need to apply the more complicated process to special buildings only. We need to make even more transparent the regular process of regulation for regular buildings. When we think about it more deeply, being multi-sectoral stakeholders and multidisciplinary professionals, what do we find at the bottom line? We find that the newly introduced BRSC, Building Regulations and Standards Council, will be the legal springboard for more objective and collaborative building care. So, after the jump, start by the legislative, a marathon awaits the executive. Execute Partnerships that will have to be the grand scheme among all of government. Including, among others, the Department of Public Works and Highways and the Department of Science and Technology. In fact, among private sectors too. And collaborate in the compliance and the enforcement that will have to be the social contract between the governed and the government. Some may choose to pinpoint who are the few who are responsible, but under the proposed Philippine Building Act, 
many will have to share responsibility. That is why the new BRSC Standing Council will engage not only government regulators but also private proponents as listed here, joined by academics, educators, and researchers because regulations and standards must benefit from advancing knowledge, skill, and attitude. They are joined also by representatives at large because buildings, structures, and houses are a public concern, being our most basic social infrastructure. Meanwhile, among us, building professionals and contractors in particular, and the science and technology community in general, we may ask, is there room for science, technology, and innovation in this most basic of infrastructure? Yes, there is. Not just a room, but a whole building. Seriously, the challenge continues for affordable safety, security, health, comfort. The challenge continues on the many concerns that we are addressing these days, including, for example, ICT or Information and Communication Technologies. The challenge continues, for example, as ICT becomes ubiquitous more and more, there are really many technological reforms, even revolutions, that can improve most of our buildings in terms, for example, of basic documentation. Or some of our most special buildings in terms of virtual twin modeling, for example, of the physical in real time or near real time for monitoring and maintenance in future. After all is said, what can we do about shelter? We urge and support the Office of the President to certify the proposed Philippine Building Act of 2020 as urgent for the improvement of our buildings, structures, and houses, our most basic of social infrastructure. We urge and support the House and the Senate to approve and co-implement this act, reforming the system of regulations and standards for various types of public and private buildings in the country, proposed, existing, or old. We urge and support the various government agencies, particularly the Department of Public Works and Highways and the Department of Interior and Local Government and private sectors to engage partner government agencies and private sectors in crafting and updating periodically the regulations and standards for buildings, mainstreaming disaster risk reduction and management. We urge and support the various government agencies, particularly the DOST and the NEDA and private sectors to collaborate across agencies and sectors in the compliance with building regulations and standards and the enforcement of the same, infusing with research and development in particular, and a culture of science, technology, and innovation in general. Together, let us infuse the regulations and standards for shelters with a culture of science, technology, and innovation. Before I end, I would like to thank again the participants and contributors to the study by the University of the Philippines National Engineering Center and University of the Philippines Law Center 
from 2016 to 2018 coming from private sectors and government agencies. And for today's presentation, I would like to thank my son for three original paintings, my daughter for a critique of my slide design, and my wife for the long-lasting support and the short haircut. All of us working from home, all sheltering at home. And I'm sharing my email address below. Please email me for more collaboration. Let's discuss some more and add more. Let's remember Isaac Newton. His motto was apparently never at rest. Keep working towards resilient and sustainable buildings. Thank you for joining. Uh, thank you very much for that very insightful and very compelling presentation, uh, Dr. Pacheco. Before we go to the question and answer portion of this webinar, may I just uh, interview you a bit about your experience in this um, uh, proposed Philippine Building Act? Let me just throw in the first question. Um, so what was your primary motivation in embarking on this squad? It's not just quite, but the big project. Um, thanks, Harold. Uh, you may be personally uh, aware of my uh, recent interest uh, in bringing our engineering closer to social science. And this project was a good exercise or this movement to, to enact a new Philippine Building Act is a good exercise in bringing different uh, specializations or different people uh, together. So it was interesting working with lawyers, for example, and of course, architects, and then urban planners, or our co-specialists uh, uh, from uh, public governance. So uh, of course, the, the details of the technical aspects of the National Building Code are also are, are, are very important and very interesting inherently to us engineers, but the social science aspects, the legal aspects, the planning aspects, um, well, if you ask uh, interesting or challenging even, very rewarding too. You know, research talaga yan dahil research also because, di ba, we, we get to learn how are the perspectives of the other sectors or at the other disciplines. Just like today, I think, iba iba yung uh, members ng audience natin, I mean, sa background, kaya marami rin siguro tayong interesting and challenging questions na marireceive sa kanila, don't you think, Sir Harold? Dr. Aquino, by the way, congratulations, uh, di ba? Thank you. And uh, Tatay also, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Um, if I may just ask a, a bit of a follow-up. So what was your favorite part of this? Well, what was your favorite part of the experience working on this project? Grabe, no? Favorite part talaga. Uh, I have to reveal that uh, I was, uh, my favorite was discussing with our lawyers in the room. And then for those lawyers from the most senior, say retired, the former dean of the College of Engineering, to the very young and more active members, admitting or or telling us that, well, you see, kahit naman yung batas para ding building, tao din ang gumagawa nun, di ba? So, so uh, of course, they have to be very careful in crafting the, the law. So, Favorite part ko talaga yung talking or discussing with our lawyers because the power of technical specification merging over with legal specification. Maybe you remember because you were also in the project, one word, for example, and the audience might, might be excited with this also. When the lawyers and the engineers or technical people are legal and uh, engineering people be in the same room. And if we ask the word, who are the competent organizations? Competence pala are uh, really uh, maraming ibig sabihin in the legal arena and in our case, in the technical arena. So favorite ko talaga uh, It's a way to... Uh,
or the housing industry because in every case I mentioned, merong mga very uh, controversial maybe or difficult issues that they bring to the table. So, favorite in that sense. Huh? Oh, thank you for um, your answer, for, for answering the candid question, sir. I must have been part of the project that was also my favorite uh, part with so many brilliant minds converging. Um, uh, not necessarily converging, sometimes it gets to heated, quite heated discussions, but, but still it's, it's good that we have different perspectives converging. Oh, mix, mix, mix muna bago eventually magko-converge somewhere. Diba? Yeah. Exciting. Interesting. And that's the challenge in real life, I guess, e even in implementing what we're trying to propose here. Dahil sa real life, marami rin ganyang challenging uh, 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 contests muna of ideas before magko-converge to a good practical solution. Yeah. So I think we can now entertain um, the questions um, from, from our audience. Um, if you're watching us on Facebook, feel free to send in your comments via the comment box. Um, if you're here with us in Zoom webinar, please type in your questions using the Q&A box. And if your question is sort of similar to what was already raised, um, you can like the question so that it goes up on the list. So we'll start with one question from um, Jesse Serrera from Cebu Institute of Technology University. Wow, we have an audience from Cebu today. Good, good. So what is the expected time frame where these regulations and standards will be implemented in the country? Okay, thank you for asking that question about time. The, I will give a short answer first and then a longer answer next. Uh, matagal pa to. Just like siguro matagal magtayo ng building, uh, it's not a month, probably it's even more than a year. But let me explain um, what we're trying to do with the proposed Philippine Building Act of 2020. By the way, nasa advanced stage na siya ng reading sa ating house at meron na rin nakapile simultaneously sa ating Senate. So in this way, uh, we are very optimistic na Kaya nga, kung hindi lang nagaroon tayo ng four or five months of lockdown, probably gawa na rin to. But anyway, we're almost there. But the multiple years of doing this by the lawmakers in the Senate and in the House, alam naman natin po, uh, isang step yan, but that's not the only step. So if we say time frame, we have probably a few months to have this uh, finally enacted in the Congress. Uh, both the House and the Senate, and then maybe to become a law. That's the optimistic take. And then the, the law itself, or the act itself, uh, uh, expects that it may take 12 months or a year, three months to 12 months, to put together the implementing rules and regulations. I have to explain that uh, not, the reg not all regulations currently under the National Building Code of the Philippines, the existing presidential decree, not all of them would be thrown away. Siyempre, we are realistic. May mga uh, regulations na operational naman and uh, the Philippine Building Act also may corresponding provisions na mag welcome din sa continuation ng ganong regulations. So maraming regulations na okay naman, uh, find, we find reasonable, uh, would still continue, but there will be many more implementing rules and regulations na blanco pa because our new Philippine Building Act is addressing some gaps in the current uh, building code. Tapos yun ding mga pangatlo, I say pangatlo because you have the Act of Congress, you have the regulations being issued by the departments like the Public Works and DPWH, and there would be standards na ginawa ng mga professional groups or mga bureaus of the government. Even itong pangatlo, syempre continuing effort ito. So my, my long answer is, uh, we anticipate a few more months for the Act to be perfected or enacted by the Congress to become the law. We anticipate three or 12 months for the regulations to be rearranged and then to be supplemented by new ones dahil may mga blanco or gaps dyan. And the standards, ito naman continuing work ito. And now I would like to throw in the point that 
the Philippine Building Act itself imagines that there's a continuing or regular cycle. Every five years, mayroong regeneration ng mga standards. So the time frame, uh, a few months to get it started, uh, a year to get it really covered uh, fully with regulations. And I would say every five years, meron na to, magkakaroon na, bago, bago po ito, magkakaroon na under this new law ng bagong regular cycle of uh, renewal and update. So uh, I would say uh, once the PBA is in, in force, every year may pinag-uusapan ang buong community na possible small mo additional change, magiging continuing process. So the short answer, sana po three months or a few months. Uh, sulatan nyo na yung mga congressman natin sa mga senators natin na wag na itong makalimutan. Baka natabunan na siya na lahat sa isip natin. But it's one of those things na just like a real building, it really takes all this time to build it and then to remodel it. So we're about to uh, no, we're about to have the act of Congress and then in one year, all of us will be called again to comment on regulations. And then, paulit ulit na po yan. Every year, within five years, may cycle. So in time frame, uh, to answer it very uh, in summary, uh, continuing process po ito. Pero the, the big milestone can come in the next few months. So Jesse, I hope that answers your question. Ah, baka iniisip niya, itatapon na niya yung bag, lumang libro or lumang code ng National Building Code. Wag muna, wag muna natin itapon. Maraming parts dyan, related pa rin sa i-re-adopt -re na regulations. Pero yung bagong arrangement, makikita natin sa next edition in a few months. Yeah. So, our next question is from Engineer Williamson Mangubat from Bahrain. Yeah, so, it's morning there. Yeah. Let me quote his question. Good morning from Bahrain. Um, in the Philippine Building Act, did the authors of the act consider the sustainability requirement before the building is before a building is constructed? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, Sir Harold, you know this also, and uh, we'd like to confirm to all our viewers that in the new Philippine Building Act, being a product, as you see, of the current times, very conscious po tayo sa. Uh, building act na hindi lang strength of materials or hindi lang economics or cost ng materials ang iniisip natin dyan at nilalagay sa batas na binabantayan. But yes, yung sustainability. Maraming explanation, uh, I believe, kung what sustainability may mean. But uh, as you know, we could probably uh, mention three aspects of sustainability. Bukod sa sustainable because the material, uh, yung alam na mga engineers, no? wear and tear, and over time, uh, it will keep its own uh, original properties. But that's only the technical part. The economic side also is sustainable being it's affordable and it's worth it. And the environmental side also, that uh, it's, not to the, it's not going to cause detriment, much detriment to the environment. So the real question maybe is how how is this uh, sustainability consideration uh, given a big or good place in the new Philippine Building Act? Uh, it is there going to be uh, one of the stated uh, high objectives of the PBA and also the enforcers of the uh, PBA are mandated to see to it that uh, considerations or, or sustainability ratings of materials and methods, even locations, are included in the design, in the design itself, not only in the construction. Of course, in the construction itself, the same PBA uh, would be now uh, giving um, in not only uh, rules but incentives to uh, the construction industry to look into the sustainability of the materials and methods that will be adopted. And by the way, I'd like to end that answer by saying the PBA will not be uh, very prescriptive. You pong do this, do that, uh, this way, this, uh, that way. Yung pong ating PBA ang mangyayari, medyo performance ang sinasabi niya. Sabihin niya, uh, 
please aim to make your building last for so long or if it's not a, a perpetual, make sure it's easy to repair. And then it will leave, the PBA will leave the details of how to do this or what material to use. So choices pa rin ng mga designers. So hindi naman siya uh, masyadong straight jacket. But kasabihin sa atin, let's aim for not only strength but also sustainability. Yes po, high objective po yan sa, doon sa objectives ng PBA. Thank you, sir. And I hope that answers your question, Engineer Williamson Mangubay. Um, we have one question closer to uh, home. So it's from Sir Tito Aliga of Hershey. Oh, uh, Sir Tito, hi. Long time no see. So he says, Salamat, Benny. Uh, I wonder if you can cite a couple of specific changes, say, in the engineering design and construction code and practice that have been included in the 2020 PBA. I guess 43 years would have been significant items. Okay. Um, let me answer the question this way, uh, just to cite some examples. I would try to cite three levels of examples na magiging changes. Uh, one is, let's start with the very technical, dahil siguro marami sa audience natin are engineers ourselves and that. So for example, Sa technical aspects po, sa ngayon, naka parang frozen dun sa Presidential Decree 1096, even a minute detail like how high should the parapet wall above the roof should be to prevent fire from, as we know, no, objective none, to prevent fire from crossing over from one property to the next. Uh, isang change po. No? Uh, mabuburan na kasi naka, yung nakalagay na height ng parapet wall, parapet wall doon sa ating PD-1096, iba na or kontra na doon sa nakalagay ngayon sa ini-implement na regulation ng, uh, according to the fire code na ang nag-i-implement naman po ay ang DILG, Bureau of Fire Protection. So there will be things like this na dati-rati naka-embed or naka-hard code, ika nga sa program, sa ating uh, Presidential Decree 1096 na very technical, i-revise na. And it takes a law to a Philippine Building Act to revise that dahil na-freeze nga po siya na, na technical detail pero na-freeze doon sa Presidential Decree. That's one example sa ating level ng very technical. Sa level din po ng administrative, isang example ng pagbabago Nako, ito. Gusto ko itong banggitin para din naman mag-reach out sa ating mga kapatid sa profesyon ng mga architects, uh, civil engineers, of course, uh, other engineers. Kung dati po sa Presidential Decree 1096, tapos ngayon nagko-contra sa Local Government Code of the Philippines, um, meron parang administrative issue na sino ang dapat or pwede na maging local building official. Uh, dito po sa Philippine Building Act, uh, inaayos na rin na may sitwasyon na maliit na town na maaring concurrent yung municipal engineer pa rin ay maaring maging concurrent na local building official pero sa malalaking syudad na napakalaki ng trabaho ya sinasabi na ng batas sasabihin na ng bagong batas na magkakaroon na, na da, kailangan na ng separate na opisina ng local building official at doon ang kwalifikasyon ng sino ang maaaring ma appoint para gumanap na local building official, mariwanag na na maaaring architect, maaaring civil engineer. Isang example po yan ng uh, administrative uh, arrangement na mababago na rin by this Philippine Building Act. And uh, sabi ko tatlong levels yan. Ang pangatlong example ng pagbabago na maaari ko po sanang banggitin ay tungkol naman sa Kung mayroong carrot and stick uh, para sa pagpapaayos natin ng mga bagay-bagay, babagitin ko ngayon po yung mga penalties. Dati po, ang sinasabi, yung ating National Building Code, wala daw ngipin. Kasi yung batas mismo, yung presidential decree mismo, hindi makapagpataw uh, ng malaking uh, penalty or fine kahit na... No 1977, kung magkano yung sinabing amount ng pesos na maaring fine sa isang paglabag, isipin po natin after 40 years, and a freeze na rin yun sa batas. Uh, tapos uh, kahit ngayong 
2020 na sabihin nating nangyari parang barya-barya lang yung mga uh, penalty or fine or kahit yung parusa ng pagkakakulong. I'm saying na one, you might say negative or nakakatakot or pangtakot. Meron din ganyang aspeto. Ini-strengthen din po ng Philippine Building Act, yung so-called penalties. But of course, ito ay maaring penalty, hindi lamang sa isang side ha. Maaring nga ma-penalize yung owner, maaring ma-penalize yung professional, maaring ma-penalize yung contractor, maaring ma-penalize ang local building official. At mas maliwanag na sa Philippine Building Act kung how much or how long na pagkakulong. Kasi nga sabi po, para ano pa, nagagawa tayo ng batas at uh, social contracts kung halimbawa naman na hindi maliwanag yung maaring consequences ng hindi pagsunod. Sana naman maliwanag. So, um, to our audience, uh, I hope uh, I have uh, given a glimpse, uh, uh, patikim lang po yan, na itong paggawa uh, ng bagong batas na Philippine Building Act ay magre-reforma, magbabago ng maraming bagay. At nabanggit ko lang po yung tatlong bagay na madalas nababanggit sa mga consultations yung oh, wala namang ngipin ng batas. So nialikan po ng mahusay ng ngipin. Uh, at inaayos naman yung paghahati-hati din ng mga responsibilidad para yung ngipin naman na yun, hindi kagat pang kagat in the wrong parts. No? Uh, tapos kung sino ang mga pwedeng gumanap ng trabaho ng, ng local building official, isang example din, inaayos din yun o yung mga kalit-litan or ka-specific-specific na technical details. Sana hindi na magko-conflict sa iba pang mga regulations and standards. Inaayos din po yun. Like yung mga harmonization, as I said, ng provisions ng Philippine Building Act alongside sa Fire Code of the Philippines. Uh, mamaya siguro mababagit pa natin ng mga ibang pagkakaiba pero napakarami po ng mga pagkakaiba. Kaya nga, doon sa ating review project, di ba, Dr. Aquino? Pinagumpisahan natin na reviewin yung mga maaring revisions sa mga regulations lamang. Yung mga level lamang ng department pwede nang i-issue. Only we arrived at a conclusion na marami-rami yung mga major na hindi kayang ang Department of Public Works and Highways lamang or yung professional association lamang through a standard ang magbabago. Kaya umabot tayo sa ultimate level na yun mismo ang presidential decree ay papalitan i-rearrange. Hindi po natin itinatapon lahat ng laman ng PD 1096. Maraming mga na-rearrange at nakasama pa rin sa PBA. Pero maraming nadagdag. Kaya po, uh, three levels yun. At I just gave three examples uh, at different levels. Thank you, Dr. Benny. And I hope that answers the question. Um, I know we cannot go really into the details, but um, Edsel Hualda from the USP Faculty of Engineering asks if there are design requirement changes in the PBA 2020. Yeah. Um, di po ba yung Philippine Building Act, kagaya ng sinasabi sa title, batas siya para i-regulate or igiya at bantayan lahat ng aspeto mula sa planning, hanggang sa design, sa construction, maintenance. Pati nga yung pag-condemn or even pag-demolish ng buildings, uh, syempre ibang study yun pero covered rin. Ang tanong ng ating audience ngayon ay uh, sa design part kung merong pagbabago. Uh, maraming aspeto po dun sa design part na may pagbabago but before I mention some examples, syempre gusto ko rin namang uh, banggitin na marami namang continuation sa so, halimbawa, kung talagang dati pa, uh, kahit naman sa PD-1096 ay sinasabing importante ang stability or strength ng building sa kanang foundation, yung mga ganyan, nandun pa rin po yan. Ano po ang mga, ano po ang mga maaaring pagbabago sa design? Ito halimbawa, let me give an example na gumagawa na po ngayon ng requirement na dapat mag-design ng so-called, example po ito, pero marami nagtatanong. Meron ng uh, requirement na kailangan mag-design ng mga structures or buildings na gagamitin so-called permanent evacuation centers. Let me clarify that dahil may mga nagtatanong, I think, sa advanced question. Hindi po ibig sabihin ng permanent evacuation center ay relocation. Hindi po ibig sabihin yung, yung totally limipat na yung Occupants, no? Ang ibig sabihin po ng permanent evacuation center, mga building na 
doon madalas maaaring ba pupunta ang mag evacuate kung may mga event like typhoons. Pero siyempre, temporary lang ang kanilang pag-ligas doon. Sa madaling salita, halimbawa, hindi na po dito gagawin na ang ating evacuation center, wala lang, eskwelahan, wala lang, basketball court. Eh, yung eskwelahan, hindi naman dinesign yun na merong uh, bathroom, comfort room, kitchen, and all. Di po ba? Or basketball court. Hindi naman yung dinesign na may magandang uh, dingding para sa protection sa ulan or sa hangin or something like that. Sa madaling salita, sinasabi po ng bagong batas na ito, yung mga evacuation center, isang klasifikasyon o isang type yan ng building. Bigyan niya ng design. Hindi yan kahit ano pwede dahil emergency lang. Bakit hindi pwede? Eh, alam naman natin, nakakailangan na natin yan once a year or once in a few years. Eh, bakit ba walang design? That's one example. Maray po pong ibang example ng, ng design na maapektuhan ng Philippine Building Act. Uh, halimbawa, pinapalakas yung requirement na lahat ng buildings, hindi lang yung emergency or evacuation, lahat na ng buildings, uh, palakasin ang, 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 ang consciousness sa uh, energy efficiency saka water efficiency. Uh, maaaring sa ngayon, ang dinig natin, ito ay mga optional. Yung, ay, masarap, mabuting gawin to. Pero sa PBA, talagang sinasabing. So, umpisa pa lamang, pag-isipan yan. At halimbawa, merong asyo aksaya, kahit sabihin niya na kaya ko namang magbayad, gusto ko yan, private building ko yan, uh, pwede siyang mapigilan ng regulasyon. Ay, hindi ka namin papayarigan na magtayo ng building na 100 times ang konsumo ng, ng elektrisidad dahil against yan sa sustainability. So, those are just two examples ng mga maaaring pagbabago. Sa, uh, sinab- yung binab- binabanggit kong example ng Asya Mapsaya, syempre exaggeration yon. Pero, uh, ang bottom line is, hindi como private owner tayo, pwede tayong maging aksayado. Hindi ba? Kasi yung social responsibility natin na huwag nating higupin lahat yung energy o huwag nating higupin lahat yung tubig. Kailangan kasi yung i-share ng buong community. Babantayan yan, binabantayan yan ng Philippine Building Act dahil, di ba, public good or public welfare, pinabalanse. So, those are some of the examples na sa design mismo ay may mga impact or pagbabago ng pamamaraan, pag-iisip. But I have to caution na hindi naman yan bigla-bigla. Siyempre, may mga transition po tayo. So, yung, kung halimbawang nalalakihan kayo sa pagbabago na binanggit kong example, uh, ang PBA po ay may mga provision para sa mga transition dahil realistic naman tayo na hindi agad-agad magagawa yan. Pero magmula ngayon for the next 50 years or who knows, 110 years para ang ating civil engineering dumi direction na tayo doon. So, yes, sa design po, maraming babaguhin sa pananaw, sa technology, sa mga allowed uh, by law to regulate even the private owners. Okay, we have plenty of interesting questions here, but I think this one is quite interesting. But, uh, so, this question is from Teresito Chotorico. Will this act also solve the conflict between the architecture law and the civil engineering law? Ay, mga kababayan, wala namang conflict. Wala namang conflict. I don't even want to use the word conflict. I think the word that is probably more uh, accurate is sinasabi may overlap. At secondly, hindi po natin paglalabanin yung isang law versus another law. Hindi po ba marami namang law na nag uh, re-regulate ng iba-ibang professions. I understand kung bilangin natin sa PRC mga 40, I don't know, 45 yata yung mga regulated professions. Kaya alam natin kung may 45 uh, professions, meron ding 45 na professions nagde-describe kung sino-sino ang pwedeng bigyan ng lisensya at uh, karapatan na mag-practice ng ganong profession at Paano naman sila nire-regulate para nakikita kung wala silang malpractice? At paano din sila uh, nire-recognize kung sila ay specialist na? Tuloy-tuloy po yun, itong PBA po, yung Philippine Building Act, ay walang babaguhin doon sa 45 ng mga professional regulatory uh, laws. 
Kaya kung ano ang law ng architecture, yun din yun. Yun pa rin. Kung ano ang law ng civil engineering, yun pa rin. Kung ano ang law ng electronics engineering, yun pa rin. Kung ano ang law ng interior design, yun pa rin. Ang PBA po, I must tell you, ang naisip na approach sa consultation din sa ating mga legal minds sa College of Law, ang binabanggit po sa Philippine Building Act ay generic na building professional. Tapos po, sinasabi doon sa PBA, nandiyan pa rin siyempre tuloy ang role uh, ng Professional Regulatory Commission para iba-ibang building professionals ay kinu-qualify pa rin. And then, thirdly, sinasabi ng PBA, let those different professions participate or be qualified as building professionals. So, uh, kung meron sabihin na overlap, hindi conflict, hindi conflict, overlap, ang example po niyan parang ganito, meron tayong batas tungkol sa health ng mga babies. Pero yung batas na yan tungkol sa health ng mga babies, hindi naman sasabihin na ang pwede lang magpanganak ay komadrona o ang pwede lang magpanganak ay nurse o ang pwede lang magpanganak ay medical doctor. Uh, rather, sinasabi na each one of them maaring mag-perform ng ganyang duty basta ang, ang iniintindi ng batas yung kapakanan ng baby. So dito po, ang iniintindi ng Philippine Building Act yung performance ng building pero understood na may mga building professionals pero hindi uh, iniisip ng Philippine Building Act na nagko-conflict yung mga professionals but rather yung mga professionals nagko-collaborate. Kung may konting overlap yung mga scope ng mga professionals, yung kanila-kanilang mga uh, professional law at saka ang uh, national building official din naman in coordination, inaayos yung lahat Kasama sa, by the way, kasama nga pala sa Philippine Building Act, yung merong Building Regulator, Regulations and Standards Council, magkakaharap doon yung iba-ibang professionals, pati PRC representative, magkakaharap doon yung mga opisina para walang conflict, uh, collaboration lang. Uh, maybe a little bit of overlap, but for the sake of our buildings, mas mabuto po yung maraming tumitingin, nagtutulong-tulong kaysa yung kukulangin tayo sa professionals. So, for example, my own brother is an architect too. And uh, siyempre, personally, wala naman tayong problema dyan. And uh, it's only a matter of paano hati-hatiin yung mga trabaho para sa collaboration or paano rin mag-share, mag-contribute ng ideas. So, uh, hello to our architect friends. Huh? I remember there were a, quite a good number of architects in, in the team uh, when we uh, formed the, the when we drafted this Philippine Building Act. Say so again. Uh, there, there were quite a good number of architects in in, in the team when, when we were working on. This, oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh, oh. Building Act. Oh no man! Oh no man! We made sure po sinigurado po natin sa umpisa pa na ang mismong yung uh, team na nagre-review, nag study ng uh, old law, current law, at magpo-propose ng bagong law. Siyempre po, kasama natin dito ang mga urban planners, mga architects, mga local government uh, or governance may, uh, specialists. In other words, aware naman tayo na iba-ibang uh, building professions or iba-ibang sectors from the beginning may tendency na baka isipin natin parang nagko-conflict or yung lawyer makipag-conflict sa engineer. Pero yun po ay conflict lang ngayon pagka nagde-debate pa. Pero itong PBA ay, I think, fortunately, nakahanap tayo ng framework or formula para magkatugma-tugma yung iba-ibang professions sa iba-ibang sectors. Another interesting question from, from our audience, from Marcelino Mendoza. How does the new building act address red tape and discretion on the part of building officials? Nako ha, relate na relate ang audience natin dyan dahil kahit na hindi tayo engineer or architect, uh, pero kung nag-a-apply tayo, tayo yung owner, so red tape. 
uh, dalawa po or maybe tatlo ang mababanggit ko na uh, paraan kung paano itong Philippine Building Act ay uh, tumutulong i-alleviate or uh, isolve yung problema ng red tape. Ang isa po na very clear, uh, konektado itong PBA doon sa mga recent na pinapatas, pati yung amendments. Di po ba, meron na tayong ARTA, yung anti-red tape, at yung recent na ease of doing business. Nire-recognize po doon sa PBA na talagang yung building permit application process being a business process sa, sa, sa opisina, ay may commitment ang, ang opisina na may time limit yung, yung, ano, yung applications. Ang pang, so yun po, uh, in other words, ang first answer ay itong PBA ay aligned sa mga recent natin na batas na nagsasabi ng anti-red tape sa lahat ng klase ng opisina and this is included. Ang pangalawa po na paraan, yung PBA nakagawa o naglagay ng bagong sistema ng building type classification. Let me explain this. Para bang, halimbawa, may pila. Isa lang ang pila. Halimbawa sa grocery, mamimili ng isang daang items o yung isa mamimili ng isang item lang o yung isa mamimili ng sampung items pero pare-pareho naman. Uh, multiple, say, sampung grapes, sampung kilo ng grapes pero pa rin naman grapes. Dito po sa PBA, isang bago, isang malaking pagbabago para may streamline yung building permit process at mabawasan ng red tape. Merong classification ng simple buildings or simple structures, may classification na regular at may classification na special. Sometimes nung di ba pinag-uusapan pinag natin to informally parang show pao o parang something na alam nating meron namang simple lalong padaliin sa fast track na window sila. Yan po isang paraan. Pero I must say, kahit yung special structures, bibilis din po dito ang pagpo-process. Bakit? Paano? Kasi kahit na special yung structures, sinasabi na sa batas, sa kadon sa regulations, kung ano-ano ang criteria para masabing special. Para hindi yung, hindi mo alam, special kaya ito, punta ka sa building official. Tapos yung building official, isang buwan bago babalik sa'yo, sabihin, ay, special pala yung building mo. Dagdagan mo pa yan ng gantong dokumento, ganyang whatever. Uh, para bang late discovery? Hindi po. Sa, sa PBA, dahil nga sa umpisa pa lamang, maliwanag na kung anong type sa tatlo, simple, regular, special. Kung nagkataon na yung building natin na special, halimbawa, napakataas, o halimbawa po, ang gusto nating haban ng beam at distansya ng poste ay napakalawak dahil ballroom ito. O halimbawa po, gagamit tayo ng materialist na napakabago. Ina-encourage din naman yan. Pero dahil bago, ay hindi pa masyadong tested. So, mar may meron pang ibang dahilan para mat matawag na special at nasa listahan po yan ng PBA. Bibilis din po dahil sa so umpisa pa lamang yung owner, yung professional na designers, alam na ang mga kailangang idagdag na requirements sa requirements dahil alam na na ah, according sa PBA, sa IRR ng PBA ay special itong building natin. Hindi yung nagkakagulatan sa kalagitnaan o sa dulo. So, feel na feel po natin yan. Kaya nga pag binabanggit yung lima na major reforms, unang-una na kaagad yung to streamline the, the building permitting process. Pero by the way, sa kabila po noon, as sinasabi din ng PBA, huwag nating ipwera sa usapan yung mga maliliit na bahay o kaya mga housing projects na maliliit sila pero marami sila. Kasama rin po sila sa regulation pero meron din silang we may call simplified uh, permitting process dahil recognize ng PBA na yung maliliit na bahay at buildings, mas simple din dapat ang pag-check niyan. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, this this question is a bit specific, but it's just been asked quite a bit. So a number of our uh, a number of the members of our audience asked this. Um, 
Has there been changes or reinforcements in the requirements on earthquake recording instruments for buildings? Nakoha, earthquake recording instruments, ERI. Hindi po ba alam na ng mga audience natin na ito mo nakaraang ilang taon, siguro 2-3 years na yata, nakalimutan ko na, ay uh, ang ating uh, Department of Public Works and Highways, yung National Building Development Office, or as part ng, ng, ng mandate ng ating Secretary of Public Works, being National Building Official, ay nagpalabas ng memorandum at ini-enforce naman ng ating mga local building officials na may mga buildings, dalo na yung mga matataas, pero kahit yung maliit pero may uh, public, uh, nire-require na maglagay ng earthquake recording instrument sa ground floor, sa middle floor, sa top floor. Ang tanong yata, uh, Dr. Aquino, ay kung may pagbabago sa requirement na yan. Ang sagot ko, yes and no. Yes, may pagbabago dahil dahil sa PBA po ay nirebisahin kung ano ang specifications ng ganyang instruments at kung paano nga sila ginagamit. So, marerebisa or marereview sa karebisa po yung laman or paano ginagamit yung earthquake recording instruments. But, I must say, ako rin po ay earthquake engineering ang isa sa pinag-aaralan. I must say na hindi mababago, tutuloy din po na mga ngailangan na maglalagay ng mga recording instruments. Alam naman po natin na moving forward to the future, uh, kung maayos naman ang paggawa at paglagay at paggamit ng mga instruments, Kasama po yan sa mga technological or technical developments na nire-recommenda at kinikilala ng batas na gamitin din natin para mas marami tayong alam sa nangyayaring aktual doon sa buildings natin. May uh, binabalidate po ng uh, Philippine Building Act na yung mga recording instruments, yung mga remote monitoring ng mga buildings and structures uh, habang tumatagal uh, magiging kailangan po yan. So, ganito po ang aking sagot. Para po yung airplano, di ba? Yung black box o mga, mga barko rin. Uh, wala naman po magsasabi na hindi mabuti. O sa, wala naman po magsasabi na masama na may recording kung ano yung nangyayari doon sa loob ng building o sa loob ng black box. I think ang talagang tanong po ng ating audience ay kung pa, mababago ba kung paano ginagamit ang ganyang earthquake recording instruments. So, balik po ako dun sa aking yes and no. Uh, tuloy pa rin po na gagamit ng mga uh, recording instruments sa ating buildings, lalo na sa earthquake. Uh, ang mababago po ay kung paano na sino ang in-charge ng pagtingin doon. So, kasama po yan sa technological advancement naman. Pero gusto lang natin din I think, yung, I think yung ating nagtatanong na audience, ang gusto rin lang naman siguro ay ayusin natin yung pag-implement doon dahil mahirap naman kung dekorasyon lang yung recording instrument o kaya mahirap naman kung sa halip na matuto tayo at maligaw o malito tayo dahil mali pala yung pagbasa natin. So, yun po, pagkutulong-tulungan natin yan. Pero tuloy po, tuloy po ang paggamit ng mga recording instruments dahil uh, yan naman ang way to the future pero yung paraan ng paggam ang maaring iaayos pa ng ating PBA na bago. Um, another question from uh, Angel Condaga. Will this law include agricultural buildings? Will this law include agricultural buildings? Agricultural. The law covers all buildings including agricultural. Kausap din po kasama sa nag-a-attend ng technical working group ang uh, ating mga kasamang professionals sa uh, uh, professions sa agriculture, sa kabayo. At kasama rin po ang Department of Agriculture na nag-join sa mga technical working group. Ang, ang talaga pong sagot dyan ay uh, may klasifikasyon ng agricultural building. So therefore, uh, kasama man sa batas, in the same way, ang housing po o habahay houses, kasama rin. Kasi nga, ang, ang pananaw natin sa Philippine Building Act 
eh, hindi hinahati ang regulasyon dahil yung usage ay iba. Uh, mas mabuti na the same Philippine Building Act ay kinakover ang iba't ibang klase ng buildings pero yung standards or yung technical standards para doon at saka kung sino-sinong mga professionals ang may uh, technical background para mag-handle noon. Yun ang isinasaayos sa implementing rules and regulations. So the short answer is yes. Ang agricultural po ay isa sa uh, category or type of use or occupancy. In the same way, in the same way na ang hospitals ay kasama. Di po ba? Or ang fire station ay kasama. So kasama po. Okay. Um, so, in the interest of time, we'll probably be um, answering the last four questions. Um, let's start with um, the question from um, Mr. Anthony Pantaleon. So, good day. There's currently a pending Senate bill on the integration of NCC in the Engineering and Architecture Board exam and curriculum. What's your position on this relative to the proposed changes in the PBA of 2020? Oh, uh, kung clarify ko po, maaaring ang binabanggit ay isang bill sa Senate at naipasa rin naman po ito sa House na sinasabing yung National Building Code of the Philippines ay isama sa curriculum ng uh, mga bachelor's deg bachelor degrees ng iba-ibang professions like architecture, engineering, iba-ibang klaseng engineering. Kung Sir Harold, yun siguro yung ibig sabihin ng ating yeah. audience. No? Uh, ang Ang naka, nakataon, yes, the answer is yes, na ito po ay tuloy pa rin sa madaling salita. Kaya nga po sinasabi doon sa Philippine Building Act na ito ang kapalit ng National Building Code of the Philippines. Sa madaling salita, kung dati-rati ay magiging requirement ang National Building Code na arali natin sa eskwelahan, uh, once na ipasa na itong ating Philippine Building Act, automatic na ito ang kapalit na requirement. Uh, kasi ang laman din naman ito ay tungkol sa regulations ng buildings. Nagkataon lang na ito yung mas bago na batas. So yes, kailangan naman po talaga na pag-aralan to part ng ating technical training dahil dito tayo mag-uumpisa ng yung ating technical training, hindi lang yung law of physics, di ba? Sabi ko nga sa ating presentation kanina, we learn hindi lang yung F equals MA, kailangan matutunan din natin kung ano yung mga acceptable or tama according sa law by people like batas or even laws of economics kung ano yung mga pinag-aagrihan na uh, sustainable or economically viable. So yes, yung requirement po na proposed na gawing part ng curriculum, yung National Building Code, ipapalit po doon ang requirement na pag-aralan din sa curriculum uh, itong uh, Philippine Building Act. So, oh, thank you, sir. A question from Fidel Devera from Saudi Arabia. Um, Hello. Is law be more strict when it comes to safety violations in building professionals and contractors during constructions? Very evident nowadays that workers are not working safe, especially on low-rise constru constructions like no PPEs and working at site, etc. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, alam naman natin na whether sa, kahit sa ibang bansa or sa Philippines, nakukumpara natin yung construction practice. So first, let me, let me mention na yung batas nga na Philippine Building Act, ina-address hindi lang yung design. Ngayon, nababanggit natin, ina-address din yung construction. Uh, of course, nagko-coexist. Meron pang ibang batas na nag address din ng occupational safety and, and health. At tuloy-tuloy din yun. Pero in addition, yes, may dagdag po ng mga provisions dito sa Philippine Building Act para mas specific na yes, ang construction po, di ba, may involve na professional in charge of construction. Uh, hindi biro-biro, kahit naman ngayon may requirement na uh, you can be, we can be a contractor uh, to build a building. Uh, kahit na hindi tayo lahat engineers o hindi tayo lahat architects, that's okay. Pero doon sa organization ng plantilla, ng mga nagpapatakbo ng construction company, alam naman po natin requirement na mayroong professional in charge. So among many things, yung duties, yung responsibilities ng professional in charge of construction 
ay mas nililinaw dito sa PBA. And yes, kahit po yung potential penalties or even criminal uh, liability, meron po eh, civil, also criminal, potential liabilities ng professional in charge of construction ay mas nililiwanag at saka mas nilalakasan ang penalty dito sa Philippine Building Act para nga pansinin sa halip na ignore-ignore itong ating mga batas. Kung minsan po kasi kung maliit lang naman yung penalty o sige, bayaran mo lang yung penalty para matuloy lang mabilis yung project ayaw natin yon Ayaw natin yung for the sake na mabilis na pressure yung professionals in charge of construction. Mas, mas iintindihin nila ngayon na talagang ano, malakas ang batas na binabantayan yung welfare ng no, mga nagkatrabaho sa construction site. Hindi pwede sa atin silang itulak para lamang bumilis. May responsibilidad ang professional in charge of construction. In addition to the responsibility of the, the general contractor himself. So yes po, babantayan yon lalo with corresponding penalties uh, sa construction profession in charge, professional in charge. Thank you, sir. Second to the last question. This is in relation to um, your comment earlier on the building code adapting to technology. Um, so is there any move towards requiring buildings to submit BAM plan plans prior to occupancy in the PBA 2020? And that question is from Paul Nightmare, one family. Uh, I, I didn't get quite clearly the last part, the okay. second part of the question. So is there a move towards adopting or requiring BIM plans prior to occupancy? Building information BIM. What? Oh, okay. All right. All right. Okay. BIM. Um, the, the PBA itself does not say in those words uh, the technical term of building information or building um, uh, information systems. But the spirit of the PBA includes this. For example, I'll start in something more basic. Even during the application for building permits, uh, the PBA uh, mandates or provides that there should be an electronic repository and database of information about buildings. Uh, not only for the access of the building officials, but maybe as mentioned now, so that in general, even the maintenance or future perhaps renovation or repair of buildings can be uh, uh, doc I mean, guided by documents na not only complete and faithful, but accessible. So if we mean um, electronic building information management uh, systems being used in buildings, I must say yes, that is the direction because even the local building officials are saying they agree that even building permit documents ideally should start from electronic uh, data. And of course it follows that the building management plans also uh, be supported by building information management uh, systems. However, as I said at the beginning, it's not it's not prescriptive. Hindi sinabing, oy, bumili ka ng tatlong X. Uh, the, the PBA language is not like this. The PBA language is not very prescriptive. Ang sinasabi ng PBA, oy, i-record mo, including electronically sa database, yung information tungkol sa building para accessible. And then yung how can follow sa regulations and standards. Thank you, sir. So we're down to our last question. Oh, we'll last na ba? Ang bilis ng parahon, ano? Um, so unfortunately for those who sent in their questions a bit, quite a, uh, a bit late, um, I think you can um, connect with Doc Benny, right? Doc Benny? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please email me. Uh, I'm sorry we cannot meet face to face, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, we have much, a lot of time for emails at least, so yes. But for now, we can take one or two more, you said? Yes, yes. And this question is from um, Sir Ger Gerald Iglesia from San Diego, California. Wow, hello, hello, compadre. Yeah, where it's past 1 a.m. It's actually almost 2 a.m. there. You mentioned that the passage of the PBA of 2020 may take 
a few months or so, or a few more months or so. In the meantime, what is your biggest concern that might occur before the passage of this act? In other words, what keeps you up at night besides the PBA completion itself? <laughs> um, well, maybe there are a few things or several things, but anyway, let me only mention one. And uh, it's not a joke, it's very real that we're always worried about an earthquake uh, affecting old buildings um, that have not been retrofitted because retrofit is a very, I mentioned it, it's uh, easier said than done. Economically, socially, napaka disruptive niya. So our research team at UP, as you know, have been involved, we have been involved uh, in the scientific study of scenarios of earthquake in the greater Metro Manila area. It's very real that uh, the density of buildings and of course other structures, including bridges and other uh, hard structures in the metropolitan Manila are genuinely very exposed and many are still very vulnerable. Uh, just to give you an idea, yung pong mga tulay, marami dyan na aksyonan na nire-retrofit na, meaning binring up yung standard to the present kasi now we know much better kung ano yung estimate ng maaring uh, extent of earthquake that could hit. Pero karamihan po ng mga residential and private buildings natin, uh, alam mo natin, legal naman sila lahat. Uh, then when they were built 20 years ago, 30 years ago, lahat naman sila following the regulations at that time. But the science has advanced much quicker now and we are aware talagang pagka pinuntahan natin yung building at inassess natin kung minsan meron tayo, di ba, Dr. Aquino, Sir Harold, meron tayong mga pinopromote na even rapid visual assessments para lamang mag-umpisa. Even by rapid visual assessment, even by detailed engineering assessments, Alam natin, hindi, hindi uh, mayroon, mayroong mga buildings, marami-rami, na may kahinaan. When we say po, pag sinabi po natin na may kahinaan, maaring collapse kaagad, o kaya naman ay maaring hindi agad mag-collapse, pero uh, hahapay na and hindi na pwedeng balikan even after the earthquake. Very real yung scenario in my mind. Sana wag naman mangyari, but the probability of course increases dahil matagal nang hindi, na, hindi nag-earthquake yung West Valley Fault. So that is one real uh, nightmare for an earthquake engineer, for example, na we couldn't do fast enough. Pero by the way, ang, ang national government nag-iisip, nag-iisip, nagpa-plano, but the speed of implementing assessment and retrofit of old buildings, unfortunately, is not very fast. Pero itong PBA would accelerate this because uh, sinasabi dyan na kasama ang private owners para mag-cooperate na i-assess ang building. At kasama rin naman ang gobyerno para mag-incentivize na matuloy ang retrofit, including ng including the private buildings. So, uh, Dr. Uh, Iglesia, my compadre, and uh, at the same time, you may know, he's not only a civil engineer, but a lawyer now. Yes, it's a legal problem too. Legal naman lahat yung mga old buildings natin, pero technically vulnerable. So, what can we do or what should we do about them? It's a call also to our private owners. Now, we have to embrace the responsibility. Alam po ba nyo na after 15 years, yun pong mga architects, saka mga engineers na na-involve sa design, saka sa construction ng inyong mga buildings at inyong mga bahay, wala na po silang responsibilidad at liability sa buildings ninyo. Yun po yung sinasabi natin that the legal reality is or fund na po ng technical professionals yung mga old buildings. Kaya kahit man lang assessment, dapat ma-assess sila. Kung minsan makikita natin may extra strength and resilience naman pala yung building, edi okay pa tayo. Pero madalas po, madidiskubre 
ay sa standard pala ngayon, kukulangin na pala itong building o itong bahay na ito. And then, pagtulong-tulungan po natin kung ano ang pwedeng gawin to reduce the risk and uh, our vulnerability. So that's that's one that's one that scenario nightmare that can happen anytime. Sana wag pero may chance, may real chance. Thank you, sir. Um, the final question is from Sir Dan Cabriones. Um, is the government construction sector complying or receptive to, to these? After all, the bulk of construction right now is from the public sector because of the build, build, build program. Yeah, um, I must say outright na ang ating construction sector, ang ating government cluster promoting construction, uh, they have a buy-in into this. Hindi naman, po, hindi naman po kasi itong Philippine Building Act would slow down construction or increase cost. Hindi naman po yan uh, automatic effects. Rather, talaga po yung participation ng maraming professionals to be uh, involved in the design, in the supervision, yan ang kailangan, mag-active tayo. So, madaling salita, yung budget po ng gobyerno para magpatuloy ng maraming boom, uh, how do I say, uh, in stimulus sa ating construction sector, uh, that should not be affected uh, in a bad way by the Philippine Building Act, but rather, this will tell us, the professionals, this will tell us the contractors how to systematize and document and become more transparent with our with our activities uh, all for the sake of making the responsibilities shared transparent and shared yeah but yes tuloy-tuloy tayo da alam naman po natin na kailangan natin ng shelter at building kailangan natin ng uh, stimulus sa economy so this PBA should help in setting the, shall we say, the, the rules of the game even better. And therefore, many more should be encouraged to get into that game. So I hope nasagot natin yung, di ba, Sir Harold, nung magumpisa tayo, sabi ng ating audience, mga 60% may familiarity sa National Building Code, uh, parent. I think that was a very good sign because it means na de, dahil sila din ng audience natin ay mga citizens na dapat sumusunod sa ating regulations. So alam naman natin na very well na mayroong ganang regulations, hindi basta-basta. The others are not very familiar, pero I'm sure may idea rin na merong batas para dyan. Siguro dinedelegate lang nila sa mga professionals or officials. Yung second question about uh, saying na uh, before our webinar, 60% ay hindi familiar dito sa bagong pinaginagawa na Philippine Building Act. Gusto ko lang pong banggitin na isang assurance na, di ba, Sir Harold, yung, yung ating study team, we were very conscious na kung sakali man na may recommendation ng repeal ng PD-1096 and adoption of new PBA-2020, yung lahat po ng parts or practical, still relevant parts from the uh, PD-1096 at yung corresponding nilang regulations, there is a good provision of transition para komonekta dito sa PBA. Kasi gusto natin smooth transition, hindi, uh, hindi biglang disruption at hindi na alam kung anong susundin na regulation. So I hope uh, and maybe by now you share with me the hope na matagal man ito ginagawa uh, at alam natin na ang batas ay batas pero tao rin ang gumagawa at hindi man tayo familiar until two hours ago. Sana ngayon on board tayo to re re confirm to our uh, congressmen and our senators na ituloy na po natin yan. First big step nga yan eh. Sa second step, meron pang regulations. Sa third steps, meron pang standards. And all of us in the audience today, sana mag-participate dun sa discussion at re re ano, uh, recalibration and uh, uh, modification, updating ng mga regulations and standards dahil yung mga detaling yan, kagaya nga nang sabi ko kanina, aayusin pa rin natin yan. 
Pero binigyan na tayo ng PBA ng bagong framework kung paano mag-sama-sama. Uh, and the work will continue. Kaya sabi ko nga, sana science and technology uh, innovations ay gamitin natin para yung regulations hindi nakakasakal but rather yung regulations nakaka-enhance ng better performance. So I hope I hope our audience will be with us dahil three months is a big step and then one year for implementing rules and regulations. And every five years, dapat nagsalita tayo as a community kung ano na yung tama pa, alin yung for updating, or ano yung even visionary for the future. Welcome din po yun, yung thinking of the future, like the next 110 years of engineering. So, and Thank you, sir. Um, and I hope uh, our audience um, are as inspired and as compelled to actually support this, this endeavor by... by, by si, Congressman, si Congressman Romeo Momo, one of the sponsors sa House of Representatives, I understand, may be listening or watching sa Facebook Live. Uh, it's a proof na siyempre nga po nasa isip lagi ito ng ating mga lawmakers. And now, more in our audience, we hope. Thank you very much again, sir. And I, I guess we're, we're closing our webinar. Now, thank you so much to our speaker, no, Dr. Pacheco. Palakpakan po natin siya. Uh, that was a very long uh, lecture, no? So I hope kayo napagod and we learned a lot from your talk. As, as you mentioned, no, we really hope that our audience had gained new knowledge. No? When we started, we asked them about their knowledge about the building code, the new building act. No? So, ang, ang, we hope we were able to contribute uh, to, to increasing your knowledge on those topics. Thank you so much, Dr. Pacheco. Ang dami naming take away. No? Uh, the best of all, I think, would strike is Marami. Kayo nga dapat ang nag-closing remarks. Pero I think what struck me really is about not considering other similar laws as conflicting, but rather uh, maybe overlapping, but something that we can take advantage of, that there are more of us, no? more professionals looking into these issues on, on buildings. Thank you so much. And of course, to Dr. Harold Aquino, maraming salamat for moderating this afternoon's uh, session. And then, so just to share with you, this is the this is the last of the five webinars that we that we have organized. And to share with you, we were able to reach a wide audience. Thank you to this new platform. No? For this afternoon session, we had a live audience right now. There are 176 participants in Zoom, but earlier it was, it reached 180, 185. And then in FB Live, you have additional 80. So that's a lot. That is something we cannot reach in a physical conference. And as you have seen, we have guests, you know, all the way coming from America, like attorney, engineer, Iglesia, maraming salamat. And, and, and from so many other places also, like from the Middle East. So just to share with you, uh, para po itong wedding, ano, same day edit, nandiyan na yung ating uh, webinar for, for this afternoon. But, so in, in total, we've had 800 plus of uh, Zoom attendees and a total of 35,000 views of the webinar on FB. Na isip ko lang nga, Dr. Pacheco, no? this is something we can use when we start lobbying for the hearings. No? Magandang, magandang background. Yan, we were able to reach uh, siguro all over the Philippines. Marami tayong uh, participants. And then 
from other countries like the US, Bahrain, UAE, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, India, Singapore, Hong Kong, and many others. So we thank all of you no, for, for participating. We'd like to specially mention those who were uh, who were present in all our uh, webinars. So we'd like to thank Tito Aliga and Fritz De La Cruz of UPRDFI. Maraming maraming salamat po. Palakpakan din natin sila, kumbaga valedictorian. No? Also, Dante Briones of also an alumnus of the College of Engineering and with UPRDFI. And I'd like to specially mention the participation of uh, deans from other universities. I'd like to uh, to acknowledge the participation of Dr. Francis Uy of Mapua. Thank you, uh, Francis, for being here. Also, uh, an officer of the PICE of PICE. Also, Dr. Jonathan Dunca, the Dean of the College of Engineering of De La Salle University. We really appreciate that uh, you are you are here with us this afternoon. Of course, thank you again for uh, thank you to PICE no, for the for the support. We wouldn't have reached this big audience without your your help. Maraming maraming salamat. So maybe I'd just like to reiterate now when we look at all the webinars that, that we had, I think one common thread that is, uh, or one common takeaway from all of those webinars is that we should be integrative, we should collaborate with other disciplines. So we'll, let's work with the lawyers, with the social scientists, with the architects, so lahat po ito mahalaga no? if, we, if we want meaningful uh, changes in all our systems. So not only for our topic this afternoon, but for our past topics as well. So with that, oh, thank you din po sa aming mga technical support. Maybe you can turn on the video para makita nila sinong nag email sa kanila. Uh, thank you, Lea Jola. She celebrated her birthday yesterday. Pero nagtatrabaho po siya para sa ating webinar, ay nag-off ka agad. Si Gian, siya po yung voiceover natin. Hindi po siya, baka akalain nyo, siya ay galing sa mga radyo. Uh, maganda lang talaga po ang boses niya. So with that, uh, thank you so much. Let's keep the conversation going. Uh, as I've said, hindi po ito ang huli. Pero for now, siguro, uh, eto muna, but uh, abangan na lang po ang susunod. And I'd like to reiterate the call of Dr. Pacheco for us to help in when we start lobbying, when we start the hearings for the Philippine Building Act. Sana po nandun tayo para supportahan ito. So, maraming maraming salamat po. You have a good evening, a good weekend. And if you're interested po, we'll have the virtual recognition rights of the UP Institute of Civil Engineering tomorrow starting at 3 o'clock. Uh, it's going to be on FB Live. By the way, please check and like our Facebook page, UP Institute of Civil Engineering. Nandun din po yung iba naming uh, webinars. No? If you want to uh, check it out, we'll be happy if you can check them or even share them you know, with your colleagues. Yan lang po. So, reminder then, uh, for for your certificate of participation, kindly uh, fill uh, fill out this form. Yun lang, maraming maraming salamat po. We hope you have learned a lot from Dr. Pacheco's discussion this afternoon, and that ends the UPCE at 110 webinar series. Do not forget to follow us in all our social media accounts where you can watch the replays of all our webinars. Till next time, stay safe everyone.